Hey everyone, it's Bill here again, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at a slow ballad style piano improvisation that you can play using the Mixolydian mode and sus4 chords. Now, don't worry if you don't know what those terms mean, because I'm going to explain all the technical stuff in a bit. Let's look at the improvisation first. Now this is one of those exercises which is actually really simple, but if you're a more advanced player you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. There are just four basic chords, and I was playing around with them just at the start there. We've got G, F6, which is just a, a regular F major chord with a, a sixth added, but D, E minor 7, and D sus4, yeah? Although we're going to be playing around with those quite a little bit. We've got four beats per bar or measure, and each um, <clears throat> each chord lasts for two bars before a change. So we've got a kind of eight bar loop, which we're going to repeat over and over and over. Let me play through the improvisation a few times. I'll start out fairly simple and get a bit more complex just to kind of show you the range of levels that this can work at. Okay, I'll talk through exactly what I was doing there in a minute, but first I'll, I just want to look at some of those music theory concepts that I was talking about. First of all, as I said, the improvisation uses what we call mixolydian mode, so let's go through what that is and the effect it has. Now this isn't the time and place for a full discussion of what modes are, yeah, but basically a mode is a type of scale. You might even say that the scales we're used to, the regular sort of uh, major scales and minor scales, are themselves modes, yeah, but that mode is the, t the term we use for particular types of scale that aren't the regular major or minor. And this, as I said, was mixolydian mode, yeah, let's take a look at that. Let let's imagine we had the regular G major scale. Okay, here's the G mixolydian scale. As you can see, it's exactly the same, but instead of that F sharp, we've got an F. Okay, so in the Mixolydian scale, wherever you play it on the piano keyboard, the seventh note is a semitone lower than it would be in the major scale. So here's C major, okay, and here's C Mixolydian. Okay, and the seventh is just lowered by a semitone by a half step. Now, um, that creates some very kind of distinctive sounds, okay, and it gives us some quite interesting chords to play with, because as with the major scale, you know, you can build chords off the major scale, create the so-called diatonic chords of G major, you can also build chords off the mixolydian scale. It also kind of gives us a problem, because one chord that we can't build using the mixolydian scale is the major five chord, okay? So the major chord that is built on the fifth degree of the scale. If we're in G major, then the five chord is D, we've got the F sharp. In G mixolydian, we haven't got the F sharp, so the number five chord is D minor. And that's kind of a problem, because as you may know, the number five chord, the dominant chord, has an important role to play in resolution. It pulls us strongly back to the tonic. So we have the five, one resolution. Whenever we hit number five chord in a major scale, it wants to take us back 
to the tonic chord, to the G. And an awful lot of that um, dominant function, as we call it, comes from that middle note of the dominant chord, which is the leading tone of the major scale. It's the note immediately below the tonic, the G, that really wants to pull us back up to the tonic. But we don't have that in, in G mixolydian. Instead, we have this D minor chord, which kind of resolves a little bit to G, but it, it's a much weaker resolution. So one of the things we can do is use another chord that can crop up quite easily in, in the mixolydian scale, is use D sus, okay, or D sus4 to give it its technical name, because we can have other types of sus chords, but often sus4 is so common, often, often it's just called a D sus. But the D sus4 is like the regular D major chord, okay, but which we can't play if we're sticking in mixolydian, but it has a G instead. And it provides a slightly stronger resolve back to the G and strong enough for it to function as um, a, a dominant chord in G mixolydian. What you can do, of course, if you're improvising in mixolydian, is just drop out of the mode altogether, back into the major, and and, and bring in the, um, the regular number five chord to take you back to uh, the tonic. But if you want to be kind of pure, if you want that pure mixolydian sound, then D sus is the way forward for your uh, number five chord. Just before we talk about that chord in detail, do please remember to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you haven't already. Just hit the red subscribe button here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Yeah, it only takes a couple of seconds. And follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well. Just search Bill Hilton on either site or look at the links in the description field underneath this video. While I'm at it, I'll just tell you about my books. There's How to Really Play the Piano, which is really useful if you know a little bit about how to read music, but you want to understand stuff like chords and improvise and in particular you might be interested in seven studies in pop piano and this is a series of short piano pieces starting easy and, and getting a little bit trickier towards the end along with kind of loads of accompanying notes and explanation and guidance really handy if you're interested in this kind of pop piano style that we're looking at today again you know there are links below and also in the little YouTube card that you can flip out by clicking the little letter I in the top right hand corner of the screen lots of people really like them, so do do please check those out. Bear in mind that you're not limited to using sus4 chords in the dominant position. Yeah, sus4 is a pretty cool sound on most chords. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not using it for a dominant function, then you can be, you know you can begin to play around with dropping in the sevenths and ninths and all sorts of other kind of extensions and things. Just bear in mind that whatever key you're working in, there are some chords that won't, won't easily form a, a, a sus4. Say, for example, you're in G major and you're playing the chord of C and you want to stay in G major, you don't want to drop into G mixolydian, then you don't have the F natural that you would need to make a C sus4. You've got the F sharp instead, which makes for um, a chord called C lydian, which is actually really cool itself, but it's not a sus4 chord. Okay. Um, again, if you were in mixolydian, then you could do that because you've got the um, the F natural there. Okay. So in mixolydian mode, you could use G sus4, um, G mixolydian, C sus4, and D sus4. The sus4 sound is really kind of um, really kind of common, you know, and really commonly associated with mixolydian. Okay, so here we are back at the top of the improvisation and what I'm going to do is just run through it and talk about some of the stuff that I was doing. First thing to note is that I was being fairly free and easy with tempo. There were a lot of kind of rubato type effects going on, if, if you're familiar with that terminology, in that I was, I, I was kind of feeling fairly free to speed up and slow down the beat depending on the expression. And in this kind of style, you know, that's an entirely natural thing to do. You should play around with that. Um, it's much easier to do, by the way, as a solo instrument or if you're just playing the piano and singing than it is if you have other musicians working with you. Th that's when coordinating it becomes difficult. But if it's just you playing solo, then, you, you know, you can you can kind of be a bit free and easy with the rhythm. That's not to say you should do that all the time, of course, because you need to practice playing against a steady beat as well, okay? But if you're playing something like this, you know, do experiment with getting faster, getting slower, pausing every now and then, putting a little break in the beat, um, and, and, and seeing what effects you can come up with. Okay, um, let me put my cup of tea down, and um, let's look through the... Um, 
the just the first time through the chord progression. Here we go. Okay, and there's that D sus chord, very distinctive kind of kind of open sound. I, I love that um, that 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 sus four sound just talk about some of the stuff that I was doing there so I started with that very kind of bright chord I gave it a little bit of a, a push dynamically and um, before everything got softer again um, and all I was doing was playing a G chord there but dropping in the ninth the A okay so it was a kind of um, a, a, a G adds nine and, and the ninth gives it that little bit of extra color that little bit of extra warmth we'll, we'll listen again listen in again in a second very quickly I was bringing in the F there over the f chord the distinctive mixolydian sound elsewhere in the improvisation i was being a bit careful about where and how i used the f well, we'll come back to that in a minute or two but it came in there i had a little bit of a rhythmic motif going on in the left beginning as is typical in pop piano to build a bit of tension between the two hands to create that rhythmic movement yeah so quite a bit going on there just in the first few seconds let's just listen again so there's my suspended ninth. There's our F. A little bit of a twiddle in the left. And just very gradually beginning to swell out the sound, yeah? I've started this really soft and really kind of understated and, and that's a really good thing to practice in your improvisations yeah anyone can bash the piano keyboard but practice playing soft it's also given me room to kind of expand and get louder and build up to peaks if you start loud you've got nowhere to go except quieter yeah let's keep going let's see what happens next okay what I've done here is just gone for that lovely kind of bell-like G up there, just for a bit of variation. So I've I've hung around in this part of the piano for the first time through the chord sequence in the right hand, but now I, I want to kind of build on, on, on what I'm saying, if you like. So I've gone for this G, which rings out like a lovely bell there. I, re I really like that sort of, that sort of sound. Um, I'm not going to go loads higher than that because that would spoil the effect, but you know, that's a good sound come to the F again on the F chord. Now, in Mixolydian, you do need to be careful with this seventh note of the scale, okay? Um, the reason for that is that, for example, if I play the F a lot over the G chord, that will kind of give me a G7, which wants to resolve out of the key. That G7 chord wants to take me to C. You know, it suddenly everything sounds major again, and we'll go to C. Likewise, if I were playing the E minor 7 and put the F on, risks creating a kind of G7 type sound and changing the key, modulating the key. Just play around with that yourself and, yourself and you will see what I mean, okay? So just, just be cautious with, with that note in Mixolydian because it, it, it can create, you know, those lovely Mixolydian sounds. But if you, um, those lovely modal sounds, but if, if you use it in just the wrong place, suddenly you can, you can flip you off in completely the wrong tonal direction. Okay, so just be careful there. Here we go. Bit more left hands twiddling around there. What are we building to? Okay. That little FG, boom, boom. A little bit of a rhythmic stab, a kind of bit of punctuation, a bit of a comma or a semicolon saying, right, something different is coming now. A little bit louder, a little bit of a push. And then I went into some uh, arpeggios in the left hand. Let's go. Whoops, we need to go back a bit from that. Let's go back to there. the arpeggios yeah just to, you know just to kind of structure things a little bit okay just to give it a bit of um, a forward purpose and flow some of these arpeggios are quite cool arpeggios are great if you like pop piano because you know you can really create a lovely expansive sound take a bit of practice and they're not used to them but if you're not used to them but if you're not used to them then working on your arpeggios is a fantastic practice fantastic exercise yeah. Look at the tension I've got going between the two hands. 
but yeah very open again that very open fourth sound there the sus4 sound a little bit of hand over hand arpeggio takes a bit more practice but but not too much yeah <laughs> kind of pulled back again here and then out again so it's all about you know pulling back a bit and then pushing a bit and you know sort of it's almost like breathing in and breathing out okay you know kind of try, trying to create a living organism out of this improvisation that sounds really pretentious <laughs> yeah but hopefully you get what I'm saying there let's carry on and again back to being quite delicate and understated I say this time and time again, but you can achieve really good effects just by being simple and straightforward. So when I landed on that chord there, what it is, it's the E minor seven, but I've altered it slightly. I've replaced the B with an A, so it's kind of E minor seven sus four. And all I did was land on it and play it a few times. I didn't bother faffing about or putting twiddles in. I just hit it and hit it and hit it again, quite delicately in a rhythmic way, you know, just to, and that creates an interesting effect by itself. Just have a listen again. go boom boom nice and subtle nice and delicate and then nice little twiddle at the end there okay so it's all about um you know people I go on and on about this but you know people get really worried about oh, what scales can I play what notes can I play and all, all that stuff is important here but you can kind of figure that out by experimentation in a lot of ways if you know the basic chord progression the you know the basic mixolydian scale just play around play around with different chord shapes try moving your hands more or less seeing what sound you can create but more important is the kind of musicality the expression okay um you, you know that that is really what we're aiming for here especially in something like this which is kind of subtle and gentle and and you, you know you want to kind of give it some depth as it were Okay, that's it for another tutorial. I hope I've satisfied the harmony geeks among you and not boggled the brains of, uh, of the rest of you. Um, as I said earlier, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and check out my books. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter and maybe check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign at www.patreon.com slash Hilton. Yeah, any support there is always warmly appreciated. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>